Who's the stupidest person you've ever met? And what story perfectly sums up their stupidity? When I was in the Navy, there was a cook on my ship. He once served rare chicken. I genuinely couldn't tell whether he was trying to cover up his limitless incompetence or if he genuinely believed that rare poultry is a real thing. He was dumb enough to believe it. Another time, he just filled a pan with ground beef and called it meatloaf. Another time he was supposed to make sugar cookies, you know, several hundred of them for the whole crew. He didn't bother to read the label on the container he opened, and apparently he didn't taste the batter at any point, and he actually made salt cookies. He used up all the remaining salt in the pantry and we had unseasoned food for the remaining several weeks of the mission, during which time the captain assigned someone to be the cook's bodyguard. Edits, I was not aware that chicken sashimi is a thing. Still, intentionally uncooked meat and unintentionally partially cooked meat are very different. This was the latter. You can't make salt from seawater for several reasons. 1. There are no facilities to do it on board. 2. No captain would jeopardize the success of a military mission by unnecessarily feeding the crew food of unknown cleanliness. You couldn't just assign someone else to cook. I didn't specify, but this was on a submarine. There are no spare people to reassign and cook is already the easiest, least able to cause disaster job on the ship. I worked on a hay press for about a month. Most guys had high school education. One particular guy was telling me about a girl he was talking to on Tinder, or some various dating slash chat app, when he said that she was in New York and that he wanted to go visit her. I told him that that's pretty cool and New York will be quite the change from our little town. He then asked me how close New York was, we were in Washington state, he had no idea New York was over 2000 miles away. Guy in my aircraft technician class. I'll call him Jim. The module at the time was about electrical power. We were having a review one Friday before the exam started. Earlier that week we had covered the batteries used on the aircraft, what types, how they were constructed, etc. Trainer turns to Jem and asks him about the different types, expecting him to say lead acid, lithium ion and so on. Nope. Jim thinks for a moment and says AA, AAA, C. When we got to the hangar for work experience, the same trainer had lost all faith in Jem. We were all assigned jobs in the morning. Me and another guy on wings, couple more on landing gear, all down through the group. Then he gets to Jem placed an A4 sheet of paper on the ground and told Jim to stand on it so it didn't blow away. We all laughed, Jim included. The trainer was joking, right? He wasn't joking. Jim stood there all day. I worked for a small retailer and we had that guy for a while. He would call every day and ask the same questions. And no, not in different ways or something that could be construed as clever. This same person also couldn't figure out the key fob for his own car and had to have his five-year-old daughter let him into his own car. He has kids, let that sink in for a second. He's incapable of basic math besides addition and subtraction. We buy stuff and when we tell him he gets 30%, he doesn't understand what that means. He also asks every time how much he's getting, despite not understanding the answer. I'm not sure he actually knows how to drive. We have a dumpster in our parking lot, and he manages to bump it every time with his car. Every time he leaves, we have to go move it because he hits it on the way in and out. Back to the fact that he's a father somehow, he's also an awful parent. We have witnessed him telling his kids they are worthless and terrible, stupid, dumb, and any number of insults that are more applicable to himself. Unfortunately, that's not something we can report to CPS. I have watched him, on more than one occasion, fail to open the door to the bathroom and simply walk into it face first. He once came in with a hamburger of some kind, and while eating it, pulled a packet of mustard out of his pocket. He did not put this mustard on his hamburger, he instead bit into the packet and sucked the mustard out. I could keep going. One time, he left his daughter in the car and she locked herself out with the key inside. Instead of walking two buildings down to the car repair place, he took a rock and broke the driver's side window. Our store is both a publicly accessible webpage for making orders from home as well as in-store kiosks. Despite him owning a modern Android smartphone and using it to look up food, he claims he doesn't have internet to use our website from home. His wife, girlfriend, I don't actually know, calls him just about every time he's in and he lies to her every time, saying he's on the way home and that he's stuck in traffic. As many of you might have guessed, he's not particularly well-groomed, although he usually has something in his hair. What that something is, I'm not sure. I think that's all I've got. He recently moved further away, so we don't see him very often anymore. This girl I went to school with thought Earth had two moons and adamantly argued with me and a teacher. Edit, I should have included more information. But I am new to this, so I apologize. The girl thought that there were two moons of the same size, one on each half of Earth. She thought that the Earth didn't rotate while in orbit. She also thought that since the sun was so big and bright that it blocked the moon during the day. 
None of anything she said made sense, and she would not answer any further questions or follow up with any rebuttals. I did not try to make her feel stupid. I don't like doing that to anyone for any reason and once I saw how set she was on what she believed I backed off because I'm not one to force any views, beliefs, facts, or opinions on someone. And I never said that I don't give my opinion or view or that I don't present facts, I do. I will always say what I have to say, but after a certain period of time, when a conversation comes to a complete standstill and nothing is getting through to a person, I do choose to walk away and I do so knowing that I tried my best and nothing I can do will be effective. I once had a property manager, person in charge of the rental I lived in since homeowners who lived out of state, who did a bunch of obnoxious things. My husband and I thought she was greedy and maybe getting money for herself and hiding it from the homeowners for repairs or something like that because of shady seeming things she would do when we had repairs. Then we mentioned something about gardening. She said you know, I've always wanted to try growing tomatoes and just watering them with salt water. That way, the tomatoes would already be salted when you ate them. Huge reminder to never attribute to malice what is just pure old-fashioned being dumb as a rock. The dumbest person I ever met was my friend's Uncle Frankie. Growing up, my buddy and I worked in his father's insurance office during the summers. One day Uncle Frankie comes in to use a computer so he could compose an email. It was the first time, this was in 2009. As he was trying to add the at symbol in the recipient's name, he asked where he could find it. I told him to hold down the shift button and press the number 2 key at the same time. He turned his head and with a puzzled look in his eyes he asked me, wouldn't that be a capital 2? There was a troubled kid I went to high school with. He struggled with school but had friends but was starting to do drugs and go down a bad way. He decided to photocopy the front and back side of a $20 bill, cut it out of normal paper, and glue the two halves with Elmer's glue. What's even more sad is that to test his new money he went to the gas station and bought some gum and it actually worked. So in his mind it must have meant that it was foolproof. So he then tried to go and deposit the glued up money at an actual bank. He was obviously found out and arrested. I don't know where he is now, but I'm assuming he is making similar life choices. My flatmate at university did something similar. He put a whole bunch of effort into forging 10 pound notes researched paper, found some spray adhesive that was just the right consistency, got hold of a very sharp craft knife and cutting board, figured out how to fake the metal strip and watermark with kitchen foil and crafty printing. He had an excellent printer. His copies were pretty good, but by no means perfect. So he and his accomplice Joe decided to keep the two simple rules, only use them in dimly lit bars when it was too busy for staff to check every note and only ever take one copy out of the house. That way if they were caught they could claim it was an honest mistake, they got them in their change, etc. Well, at first it worked surprisingly well. They buy one drink with the dodgy 10, pocket the change and knit back to the flat to grab another. In fact, it worked so well that they got cocky. One day, my flatmate was out with Joe in a crowded area in broad daylight when they decided to roll a joint. Joe took a bag of weed out of his pocket and passed it over. Right in front of two police officers. Of course, the officers stopped and searched them and found over 200 pound worth of forged notes, all with the same serial number. I knew this guy in high school that was a huge idiot. The best story about his stupidity happened when he and another friend got pulled over by the cops. Instead of acting like a normal person, he gets the hilarious idea to step out of the car and proceed to run as fast as he could down the block. The cops of course chase right after him, not amused at all. He gets a couple of blocks away and decides to turn around, put his hands up in the air, and scream, psych. The cops of course did not find any humor in this situation and tackled him to the ground and arrested him. Keep in mind this was before YouTube prank videos, so he wasn't doing it to gain subscribers or anything, he did it because he was a moron. Don't know if the stupidest, but pretty stupid. We were on a drive through an animal park. We see an animal. She asks what kind of meat would that one be? Someone replies, oh, it'd probably taste similar to beef I'd imagine. A few minutes later we see a different animal. She asks and what about that one? Would it be, like, a fillet or a t-bone or something? Then I realized, this woman thinks different cuts of meat come from different animals. When I was a teenager my friend's older brother was one of the dumbest I'd ever encountered. We once witnessed him trying to see inside a motorcycle gas tank using a big lighter. He assures us a lighter flame isn't hot enough to ignite gasoline. On another occasion, we got into a debate concerning the power of an atomic bomb. He was dead set that it could only take out like two houses max. This man went on to have multiple rests before I moved away, also fathered three children by two women. We all lived in a trailer court as well, not saying it's a prerequisite for idiocy, but some of us get out and some do not. I know a guy smokes a lot of weed and is fairly overweight. He had been trying to find work but was having trouble finding a job since everything he was interested in drug tested. 
he told my boyfriend that he had a plan that might help him pass a drug test. Since we'd supposedly get stored in her fat cells, he proposed that he should just eat even more than he normally does so he can gain weight. That way, the fat that he gained would replace the weight fat. Boom. Problem solved. Friend in college, she had lots of stupid moments but the best story is probably the night she went home with a guy and was freaking out the next day that she might be pregnant. They had not had sex, he'd just fingered her, but for some reason she thought maybe he had sperm on his hands and therefore could have got some inside her. I never fully understood why she thought this. I vaguely remember her saying something about he might have been jacking off before he touched her, but she didn't see. I don't know. So anyway, she is so anxious about this she decides she needs the morning after pill and gets it. Then because of the warnings about how ill it can make you, she came to the conclusion that she needed to tell her parents the whole tale, honestly can't remember her logic here, why she didn't wait to see if it even made her sick, or why being sick would be suspicious and would give her away, which led to a lecture about promiscuity. Best part of it, she was studying to be, and now is employed as, a goddamn science teacher. Me. A bunch of guys apparently tried to hijack the car I and my grandparents, who don't speak English, were in while my family was on vacation in Florida. This was in a holiday in parking lot and my parents had gone back inside to get suitcases. The guy said through the half open window that we had a flat tire and we needed to get out to check it. They abruptly left when my parents came back. I told my parents what happened and strangely enough, our tire seemed totally fine. The stupid part is that I was 7 years old and the only reason I didn't open the door and put us all at risk was because I literally didn't know how to open the door of a car. Like, my parents had never showed me and someone had always done it for me. I was an incredibly stupid kid, in this case, the stupid cancelled out and saved my dumb ass. A girl my dad dated for a while. Even while dating her my dad would say she was dumber than a bag of rocks. One day, she sat down to watch a movie with my dad. Movie was all about this guy and his twin brother. She sits and watches the whole thing, no interruptions. At the end, she turns and asks, so there were two of them? Would explain why she always had the TV turned to a music channel. Apparently she couldn't follow normal TV or movies. Me, so what are you thinking of doing after graduation? Her, college, but I don't know what major to study yet. How about you? Me, I think I'll study psychology. Her, isn't it like so crazy how tons of the guys in our class want to drive trains for a living? I mean like there aren't even that many trains anymore. Me, what are you talking about? I don't know a single guy who wants to drive trains. Her, yeah, they all want to be engineers. Me. Her, but there really aren't that many trains anymore, so I don't know how they'll all get jobs. Me. Her, and why would you need to go to college for that? Me, I think this is my favorite conversation today. Edit, we were both high school seniors, and this was 10 years ago. She really did think 80% of the guys in our class were hoping to be trained driver engineers. Yes, I did end up studying psychology. I worked very briefly with a woman who showed herself to be a dumbass and a bitch. Her grandmother died and she and her relatives discovered that the man she'd known as her step-grandfather had never even been married to her grandmother. She bragged about the family kicking him out of the only home he'd known for three decades because, if he wasn't good enough for my grandma to marry, he's not good enough for us. He was an elderly man, who lived as this woman's husband, and had everything taken from him out of pettiness and spite. It showed me how stupid she was, and I was right. She was fired a week later. I was lifeguarding at a frat party. My lifeguard friends all told me not to lifeguard for this frat, but I had my certifications freshly renewed, and they were paying really really well, so I took on the challenge. Would not recommend. There was a very drunk guy who offered me a drink when I was standing. I said no, I was guarding the water. Afterwards, this same guy gets a full beer, not even open, and bashes it against his head and screams who? He is bleeding from his head now and recognizes, is shocked for a second, then it hypes him up even more. He then dives head first into the dirty six-foot pool filled with people. This water is shallow he literally could have paralyzed himself. I blowing just whistle at everything he is doing and when he gets out, he can't understand why I am frustrated and tries to flirt with me. Mid-sentence, he recognizes he lost his Ray-Bans, stupid expensive shades, in the murky water and asks me to drain the pool. This dud was just such an idiot and acted stupidly the entire three hours while his even more stupid friends hyped him up. Knew a guy in high school who won 99% sure only passed because he cheated like crazy and got tons of people to do his work for him. In grade 11, he was taking some kind of politics course and was writing some kind of essay on American politics, we're from Canada. I agreed to edit his essay and it was the most insane thing I ever had to edit. 
There were multiple sentences that I couldn't understand until I asked him directly. He ended his essay with the phrase, just like Jesus would have wanted. I don't think he was Christian, and spelled Condoleezza Rice as Condoleezza Rice. In everyone's military career, there's that guy you kind of want to help and then realize it's a waste. My that guy didn't just take the cake, he took the cherry on top too. First encounter with this guy was I found his weapon in a poor crapper. I walked out with my weapon in his, saw a higher ranking sergeant, and turned the weapon over to him. Turns out this was that guy's squad leader. Ten minutes later, I see that guy doing rifle PT in full battle rattle with a sign around his neck stating, I forgot my weapon in the shitter, don't be like me. I'm a dumbass. This would not be the last time he lost his weapon or important field gear. I found out later on the unit tried to dump this dude off onto another battalion. He got sent back to us for refusing to cut his hair and follow various other orders. When we were overseas, he had a random outburst in the chow hall, shouting, you don't see AD in my pee. We found out it was because his ex-wife was dating other dudes. Later on, he had his weapon taken away from him because he threatened to shoot people in his squad. Not long after that, he was found masturbating the family guy. There were a slew of other things as well. After deployment, that guy got put onto my crew as my driver. He wasn't allowed to drink because he would get white girl wasted and overdramatic. He once threatened me that he was going to turn himself into the sheriff's office instead of reporting for duty because he got rejected by some girl. When I told him to do it because I'm not a babysitter, he started sobbing, saying it was my job as his sergeant to fix his problems. Unfortunately, he showed up the next day for duty. For some reason, he decided to tell the section he was a webcam model. We asked how he knew they were girls and not guys, and he said, you can tell. Turns out he was showing his deed to girls and dudes for $2.99 a minute. The night before going out to the field, we do inspections to make sure everyone packed what they needed. He took it upon himself to wake up early to remove all his clean uniforms and clothing from his backs. So he left for two weeks in the field, no showering in the field, with field gear and the clothes on his back. We figured this out on day three when his stench was billowing out of his driver's hatch. Not to mention he was constantly masturbating in the hatch while we were still in the track. Just add that to the stench and critter fest that was going on up there. More often than not, my number one man would have to punch the crap out of him to wake him up when we got fire missions. He would give us life's advice on how to scam the VA, and other forms of government such as food stamps. And told us an easy way to get free cash is to put your name on class action lawsuits. At one point, he told me the army owed him his sergeant stripes because he had been in for 9 years, and it's the least they could do for him. I told him I would never allow that to happen as long as I was in the army. He had no filter for saying stupid things. It was like his burnout brain was directly linked to his mouth. Unfortunately for the rest of us in the crew, we wore CVC helmets, which meant you had constant communication with three other people. He was the bane of my existence for three years. In the end, I got him to get out of the army. We all end up reflecting on that guy. People get annoyed that he's basically scamming $2,600 a month off of various assistance programs. I ask them, do you really want that guy in the workforce? This is the safest situation for all of us. Sleep easy at night knowing he isn't in the army anymore, Reddit. Well, unless you're in Iowa. Then he might be trying to bang your daughter or son. A guy in my program, who I'll call him him, was so uniquely stupid that he felt like another species. His way of expressing it was by constantly proving wrong the old adage, there are no stupid questions. His questions were always stupid, borderline unanswerable, and usually took five minutes to ask. My favorite instance of this was when we were learning about the concept of logic gates, specifically in gates and our gates. To people unfamiliar with the concept, logic gates take in two elements A and B and output element C. The only qualities of these elements are whether they are true or false. An in gate will output true if elements A and B are true. And our gate will output true if elements A or B are true. Anyway, our prof starts giving real world examples. Say you have a married couple. If partner A or partner B wants a divorce, neither could initiate it, so that would be an example of an or gate. Alternatively, say you wanted to shoot someone. You'd need bullets and you'd need a gun to fire them. That would be an example of an end gate. Our prof says all this, to which MM asks the surprisingly succinct question, so, did the gun cause the divorce? You'd get a story like this on average once per lecture. Edit, a lot of people are pointing out that question could be reasonable given the topic and how it was explained, or maybe he was joking. I get this a lot when telling the tale of MM, so I'd like to give some additional examples for context. This time only some of them require light programming knowledge. His head almost blew up the first time a negative was, offhandedly, multiplied by a negative. His nickname, Minus Minus, comes from the never-ending question he spewed out because of it, where he just kept saying so, Minus Minus. 
Literally, every class we have acquired a computer. He never bought one. It was always in the shop. At one point, our teacher uses Angry Birds, Star Wars edition for a physics example. Unprompted, M.M. starts defending midichlorians. We're three months into a course on operating systems, where we did nothing but mess with the terminal in every lab and lecture. It's our first test and M.M. is bugging everyone who'll listen for help, which would have been straight cheating, so the teacher walks over. M.M. asks him earnestly how to install the terminal. During a final exam he asked how to spell molecular. It was a multiple choice test. The teacher, who was wise to him, said to check question 13b, because it doesn't exist. Fifteen minutes later, he says he can't find it and asks if he can at least get a ruler. Had him, of course, in my group for a final project where we had to make a physics-based game. At the start of the semester, we were given a survey to rank our preferred positions, programming, lead, art, music, design. For some reason, my group was comprised entirely of people who had said they only wanted to program, except M.M., who didn't have time to fill out his preferences. We assigned him to art because I didn't expect anything from him and I knew I could cover it. We asked him to draw a 64 by 64 pixel block representing a cube-shaped alien. Every week for five weeks he came to me, saying he was working on it, until the final week where he said I didn't have time. Finally got it out of him, with the condition he would have his name taken off the project if he didn't contribute. I wish I still had it so I could show you how bad he messed up 64 by 64 pixels. It came in an email attachment with the message here's the aliens. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.